Okay, so now that we got the main screen done for the learning objectives, we're going to add a slide layer so that we can put in the animation for the juggling balls so that you'll see her throwing balls here. All right, so I'm going to go up to insert and then I go in over here to slide layer. So we're going to rename this slide layer. You just right click and go rename to juggling animation. Okay. So now if we go into that slide here, so this is our slide layer. So you can see the difference. This is the main slide. It's in color. The slide layers are black and white, but then whatever you put on top of it is going to be showing up in color, of course. So if I copy or if I create those three juggling balls again, so I could go back here and I could copy these. I want to make them a little bit bigger, but let's try this. Okay. And then we paste them here. And I'm going to move them over. So I'm just going to resize these and make them a little bit bigger. So if you hit shift while you're dragging, it should keep that same circular shape. If you don't, it might become an oval. So I'm just going to keep that the same as the slides I made before. So I'm going to put these two, the yellow and the blue ball in her um, right hand. and this one in the left. Okay, so I've positioned those. Now, if you click on any one of those and go to animations, you'll be able to see the previous animations. We're going to tweak these a bit, but keep the same kind of shape. What we're going to do, and what I found was an easy way to create this animation, was to create arc motion paths for each ball. So, for example, for the yellow one, I would have this path. I'll just put this up a little higher. Okay, so from one hand to the other. And then I would create a separate one, another one, going from this hand to the other to the opposite one, and then one more going from here to there. And then I would just trigger them at certain times in the timeline using the cue points and it would make it look like it was going from one hand to the other. And then if you do this for each of the balls that she has, so the green one and the blue one at different times, it will appear that they're being juggled. So that's what I've done. So I'm just going to reproduce that now. So we have for the yellow one, we have the arc motion path going this way. So that's our first one. So the yellow one is going to go over here and I'm going to show you why when we get to the steps, but just for this point right now, just follow along and you'll see, even if you don't know anything about juggling, you're going to probably learn something by building this course about juggling. So we usually start with the dominant hand and this ball is going to go to that hand and then this green one is going to go back and then the blue one will go. So that's the process. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a trigger. So to do that, you go over here, create a new trigger. So we have to go down to the objects on juggling animation. So not these ones, because this is the main screen. We're on the slide um, layer right now. So oval three is the yellow one. We're going to move it on arc motion path three. And then we'll figure out the rest after because I have to add cue points. So just use that for now. And then we're going to have it move back. So I'm going to create a new one. So you, to create a new animation path, you have to be clicking on your object. And then you go create an arc. And this time we want it to go from the left hand, so this right side. I'm going to just change the shape of that.
So we want it to go from the right side back to the left. So we have to switch the, the direction, reverse the path direction. So it's going there to there. Now we have it already created our trigger over here, move oval three on arc motion path four, and then we will adjust this after when I have my cue points in the timeline, you'll see that. And then let's create one more for the yellow one. So just, oops, Can move that over here, move that up. Okay, and we want it to go from here to here again. So that's correct. Okay, so those three are created. Now we'll do the same for the green one and the blue one. So on the green one, there's the green ball. We first want to have it going from the right to the left. So I'm just going to move that and adjust that up. Okay, so I'm going to create that trigger because that hasn't been created yet. So move oval two, I believe that's the one. Yep. And you can see because it will highlight it when you do it. So oval two, there we go. On arc motion path two, when user clicks oval two. Okay, we'll leave that for now. And then we're going to create one. So there, so we have it going from here to there. And then we need to create one going back. So add another one. But this time it's going to be going from here to there. Okay. So we just need to reverse that direction. So go here and reverse the direction. So the green arrow is where it starts, ends at the red arrow. And then we create one more. going from there to there. Okay, so it's going from here over to here. And now we have our three for oval two. And then last, the blue one. So the blue one will start on this hand and go over here. Just going to adjust that up. Move that over a bit. I want it to line up with the ball as much as possible. Okay. So I just need to create that trigger for the first one because it was copied and pasted from the other screen. So I'm just going to create a trigger. Move. Now it's oval one here. On motion path one. Okay. So there we go. And then we create one going backwards. So another one. And you have to keep creating a new one. Like if you try copying and pasting, it won't work because it needs to know which object you're on. So you can tell that by because it's showing the blue ball. So now we need to reverse this one because we want it to come back. So reverse the direction so that now it goes from here over to there and then once more going from the left to the right. All right, so now we're going to make this so that it'll come in at the right points in the timeline. So I'm just going to move this up a bit. So when this starts, we should probably do this like half a second apart. I think that looks the best. So I'm going to create cue points at each of these spots. So we have nine different motion paths here. So, right. So we need to make nine cue points.
Now I know this might be a little overwhelming at first, but you'll see it come together. You'll see what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to make this the timing for this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So, and we might need to move those around a bit depending on the the main slide because let's see let's just check this so they're all in by one second so we might want to move those down a little bit so that when this comes in so let's we can even expand this here okay so let's move these down just a little bit Okay, so now I have the cue points set, I think the way I would like them, but we might have to tweak this again once we do the preview. Okay, so now we're gonna set triggers for all these. Okay, so we've got the, the motion paths there created, but we now need to make it look like she's juggling. So what we wanna do is we want this yellow ball to go over to this hand, and then after, this green one will go over there and then the blue one and then we repeat in the opposite direction. So for trigger points one, two, and three, we're gonna have the yellow ball, then the green ball, then the blue ball, okay? So I'm gonna go over to this one over here. This is our, I don't know why it's using oval three, but that's what it's doing. So you can rename that if you like. I'm not gonna do that for this demo. So oval three, arc motion path three. So that's our first one. So we want that to happen. So we're going to edit when the timeline reaches Q point one. Okay. And then we take the first one from oval two, which is the green one. So it always highlights green. So you know which one you're on. That's arc motion path two. So we just want to edit that. So that happens when the timeline reaches Q point two and then from the third one, arc motion path one here, which we should move up a bit here. Okay, so that one happens when the timeline reaches the third point, Q point. Okay, so we just did one, two, three, and now we're gonna repeat in the opposite direction. So we'll go back to oval three, the fourth path, we want to edit that. We're going to move oval path, oval three, or the yellow one, when the timeline reaches Q point four. And then the second one here, we want this one to happen when the timeline reaches Q point five. And then this one. So the third one, the blue one, when the timeline reaches Q point six. And then we go back again to the yellow one, we repeat. So we want the yellow one to then follow arc motion path five when the timeline reaches now we're on seven, eight, nine, so seven, and then oval two, arc motion path seven, when the timeline reaches Q point eight, and then the last one here, the blue one, arc motion path nine, whoops, when the timeline reaches Q point nine. Okay, so that might be a little bit confusing at first when you're getting used to Storyline, but it, if you're either taking this course because you want to learn it and have used other authoring tools, it should be pretty similar to some of the back end kind of things you do with other um, tools you use for e-learning, Captivate, that kind of thing. If not, just keep with it. As we do more of these, it's going to become easier and easier. 
So I'm just going to review what I did before we preview it. So we, we created triggers for each of these balls to move along these motion paths. And I wanted to make it so that it would simulate someone juggling. So to juggle, you're going to be throwing the three balls in a sequence. So it's going to be yellow ball, green ball, blue ball, and then yellow ball, green ball, blue ball, and then yellow ball, green ball, blue ball. So that's basically what this is. We're just having it be triggered at certain points here. So we have yellow ball here, green, blue, then yellow, green, blue, then yellow, green, blue. So that's what I did. So let's preview this and see if this works. This time I'll preview this slide only. Okay, so see what happened there? Nothing happened. So we're missing one big piece that I'm glad I actually we did this so you can see what happens when you don't because one thing is you have to link the slide layer to the base layer. So we go back to the base layer here. We need to add a trigger to show that layer. Otherwise it's not going to show up. So we have to show that layer juggling animation when the timeline starts. So now we click OK. So you got to do this as well. But if you forget, so big deal, we forgot and when it doesn't show up, that's what you have to do. Make sure that it's showing from your base layer. Okay, so now let's go preview this slide. Okay, so we got some juggling going on here. I might want to tweak the timing a little bit of that because it is pretty fast. So one thing we can tweak is the duration of the animation itself for those motion paths. So right now it's at two seconds. I'm going to drop these down to one, one second. So you have to do that for each one of them. So we have to make sure we're able to click on all these or what you can do is you can hide some of them so you can see it. So go over here and if we look, if we want to focus on the yellow one, we can hide these and then we can see this one better and we can drag them as well. It's not as nice because then we have to put them back but just to make sure they're all correct. One. One, one, okay, and then I'll just undo that. Okay, and then hide that one and we'll make this one visible. Just make sure that's at one. Looks like it applies to all. And then this one. Just click on this. Okay, so let's make them all visible. Let's preview that again and see if that makes it look a little bit better. There we go. I think that looks a little more realistic. Okay, so this slide is pretty much done in terms of the, the main things. We haven't added some of the entrance, you know, the transitions and a couple other things. We also want to make sure, go back to the base layer, that when I like to specify what it's going to jump to as the next slide. So I'm just going to make sure it's going to go to the what you will need slide. So you can actually go down here and just specify it. And then the previous slide should be the title screen. So there we go. All right. So in the next video, we're going on to the next slide and We'll just keep chugging along and then later we will return to some of these slides to to update them or to tweak little things and add some animations and transitions for the slides.